The author's discussion of nuclear fusion in the last paragraph serves primarily to... Okay, so dot, dot, dot. So what, what do we remember about the nuclear fusion discussion in the last paragraph? It may make sense to just go up and have a look at that last paragraph. Here it is. Absent a generally accepted explanation of how helium and hydrogen can produce the sun's energy, Payne's findings could not easily override her contemporaries' preconceptions. We now know the sun's heat is generated through nuclear fusion, then it explains fusion, but this process was so well charted today that even an entry physics textbooks discuss it was inadequately understood in 1920. So when, when nuclear fusion was finally understood, all of a sudden everybody thought, oh my gosh, Cecilia Payne, you were right all along. Okay, so let's do this question again. What is the discussion doing? And you'll notice that I haven't looked at the choices yet. I really want to have an idea of what I'm looking for before I look at the choices. So what is that discussion doing? It's saying, look, this is why nobody accepted her findings at the time because people didn't understand how the sun was going to generate that heat. And then when nuclear fusion became clear that that actually works, that actually was a thing, all of a sudden we understand why how the sun makes that heat, and everybody accepted Cecilia Payne's findings, and was, she was vindicated. Okay, so again, this is a purpose of the paragraph, purpose of the element of the paragraph. What is it doing? It's helping us to understand why the scientists finally came around to accepting her hypothesis, which is really the main point of the whole passage. Here we go. Is it primarily to illustrate the impact of Payne's findings on a discipline related to, although distinct from, the one in which she ultimately made her mark. I don't, I don't think it's a, a different discipline. And again, it doesn't match what we're looking for, helping us with the, the why it finally came around that her findings were accepted. Okay, B, to explain in part the reactions of Payne's fellow scientists to her interpretation of the data that she analyzed. Uh, yeah, so it does. It does explain why they didn't they didn't understand how the sun made all that heat. So that that looks kind of good. Let's keep on going and see if there's anything better. The purpose was primarily to clarify. So one of the things I'm doing here is I'm is I'm actually turning all of these these verbs into their infinitive form. And that helps me really focus on the actual words that are in each choice. So I'm gonna do that here. So is the purpose to explain? Is it to illustrate? Is it to clarify, to show, or to demonstrate? Okay, so obviously those are all similar, but it really helps us lock into the structure of each choice. So let's, let's look at B. Is the purpose of it to clarify an underlying reason for Payne's rejection of the ion hypothesis? No, it can't be a reason for her rejection because she didn't know about it, so that's wrong. D, is the purpose to show how Payne's findings came ultimately to be modified in light of later scientific developments? No, her, her findings were not modified. Okay, so that's wrong too. E, to demonstrate that Payne's reliance on incorrect data did not prevent her from reaching a sound hypothesis. Okay, so incorrect data? No, she wasn't relying on incorrect data at all, so that's definitely not right. But let's come back to B, and the reason that B is right is not is for a couple of reasons. One is that it's supported by the passage. Two is that we made it we made a decision earlier to look for the choice that matches what we thought it was going to be. We are trusting ourselves. Trust and the reason here it serves primarily to do was to explain the scientist's position. And that's what we have here with B.